and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is a computer vision capability found in Power Automate desktop called Wait for Image. Let's go. Now let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So depending upon the nature of your application, certain controls may not be discoverable through the document object model or selectors. So some examples of this might be, say, a Citrix application or a Java application, and even it could be a web page, a web page that uses a lot of dynamic naming when it actually goes ahead and creates controls. Whenever you don't have a predictable path for actually accessing all of these objects, what you can use is computer vision to detect these objects on screen. And how this works is it's essentially comparing pixels from what it sees on screen to what you capture inside of a library that you store in your automated flow. And so what we can go ahead and do is use this wait for image action inside of Power Automate Desktop to detect these objects. And when it detects an object, what it will return is XY coordinates back to us. Now we can subsequently use these XY coordinates to further execute additional actions. For example, it could be then moving the mouse to that location on the screen clicking the mouse button. Then we could go ahead and use send keys to actually populate that text field with specific data, for example. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. So let's explain how this works before we get into the demo itself. So on the left-hand side, inside of Power Automate Desktop, we can go ahead and just search for wait. When we find wait, we're gonna find a wait for image. When we go ahead and drag that action onto our canvas, we can go ahead and configure it. And so what we need to do is number one, we want to need to determine if we're going to wait for the image to appear or disappear. And then what we need to do is capture the new image here. And this is essentially going to store it in a library, much like I talked about before, or a repository. And so what we'll do is we'll click on this button, and then what we're going to have to do is go ahead and go into that specific web page and basically draw a box or a rectangle around that specific image itself. And then that will give Power Automate Desktop, basically the ability to go ahead and compare what it is seeing on screen versus what it finds in its repository itself. Now, you can have multiple images here, and you could say wait for all images. Perhaps you've got you know, a web page that's very slow to load and you wanna make sure the web page is completely loaded. You can go ahead and toggle that setting on right here. And then most importantly, the variables produced are going to be the XY coordinates for that image itself. And that's what we're gonna be using in the demo today. Now, to demo, to put all of this together, what I am using is just a web page for rpachallenge.com. I'm gonna use this wait for image in two specific locations. One is to detect the last name, and then what I'll be able to do is detect the last name, move the cursor down into the text box, click the button, provide a text value, and then what I'll go ahead and do is find this submit button and then go ahead and click that button and see the form actually get submitted. Now with RPA Challenge, they try to make this very tricky where if you tried to use traditional recording, it probably wouldn't work because every time this page loads, the, the location of these fields are gonna be different. And also they're using dynamic names under the hood as well. So this actually is a pretty good use case for using wait for image from both an image perspective, but also from the fields itself. Now I'm not gonna do it for all seven of these fields, I'm just gonna do it for one, but it'll give you a sense of, of how you would go ahead and perform this action. Okay, so here I am, I am inside of Pad. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Chrome first. I'm gonna to navigate to RPA Challenge, 
And then what I'm going to do is wait for image. And in this case, I'm going to wait for the last name field. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and clicked on capture new image, drawn a box around last name, and then go ahead and click on save. I can also alter this tolerance value, which is basically just how much forgiveness do you want to give this. Now, naturally, this can be a fairly expensive operation, so you do want to balance this by not having too much tolerance because it'll make it actually uh, that much slower. The other thing is when you draw around this field, try not to draw too big of a box around it. That will also make it more complex because what it's going to do is it's going to start in the upper left hand corner and look for that specific pixel and then it'll go ahead and try to match it throughout the rest of the web page. So especially if you have a white background and you're drawing a box around that and it's fairly large, it's going to have to do a lot more comparisons. So you want to keep it very close to the the leftmost top leftmost pixel when you're going ahead and drawing out that specific box. Now once we find that, what I'm going to do, because of the web page, you've got the, the, the label that sits on top and then you've got the text box that sits below it. What I'm going to do is just perform a simple calculation to go ahead and calculate that offset to account for, I want to be able to move my cursor down 30 pixels in this case and basically stored in this variable called last name y text box. And I will show you when I run the demo, there's a Chrome extension called coordinates that I've used to help with this. Once I find that specific location, that text box, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it so that my cursor will be in that text box. I can leave the X value. So basically the X value being the amount of uh, distance from the leftmost edge of the web browser. And then what I am going to use this updated Y value, which is going to be downwards um, inside of the, the web browser itself. Then what I'm going to do is just send keys. So in this case, I'm going to be providing a last name. Uh, this is simply hard coded. Obviously, this could be an input variable that we pass in from an API flow. Now, I am including a display message here. This is really just for demo purposes. Otherwise, this would run so quickly, you wouldn't get a chance to really see it in action. So I will just have a little prompt here that says, that allows me to sort of pause the execution when I click the button, it'll execute on the rest. What we're doing in the last two steps is similar to what we're doing above. The difference is what we're looking for here is the actual submit button. So once again, as you can tell, I've kept things pretty tight when I drew a rectangle around this specific box. Actually, in actuality, the submit button is actually much bigger than this, but what I did wanna do is um, just keep it very tight in terms of trying to find that specific location on my page. Uh, I do have the X, Y values being uh, returned here as well, which will be useful when I go ahead and click the, the mouse, right? So I'm gonna send the mouse click and I'm gonna use those X, Y coordinates for the button in order to go ahead and to do so. So let's go ahead and let's give this a run. So perfect, right? So web browser launches, we go ahead, we're able to detect last name. We're then able to go ahead and populate the last name field with my last name. Uh, now we're at the point where we've got this display message. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click OK. When I do so, this button's gonna get clicked and this form will essentially get reloaded and you're gonna see all of these different values uh, move and shift. And so that will just prove that this actually did work. So let's just go ahead and let's click OK. And there we go. We can see that the form was submitted and that our <clears throat> Power Automate desktop flow here did execute successfully because we have no errors from that perspective. All right, so thanks for checking out this episode. Hopefully you found that useful. With RPA in general, it just comes down to a matter of strategies, right? Every app's gonna be built differently. And you know when you can use straight recording and, and having selectors that are very consistent, that's obviously the best case scenario, but oftentimes with RPA, it becomes a matter of like, how do you just make it work? And using strategies like computer vision or wait for image in this case, it's just something that you can include in your toolbox as a, a way to sort of still accomplish the problem, even though it may not be ideal as, you know, just being able to use the recorded selectors themselves. 
All right, so that wraps up another episode. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. If you're on YouTube and like this video, likes are always appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. I am posting at least once a week on Power Platform Technologies. All right, take care.